for attending the webinar series. Number three, jobs. So just a few housekeeping rules to start with. All attendees will be on mute and will remain for the whole webinar. Please use the question box to ask any questions related to the topic. All questions will be answered after the demo. If we run out of time or if the question requires a longer answer, then please, um, then we will uh, answer it offline directly. Um, please use the chat box for any questions related to the webinar. Uh, for example, if you can't hear the audio of the presenter is going too fast. And please note that a link to view the webinar recording will be sent out to all attendees after the demo. So uh, as mentioned, this is top five webinar series. It's a small amount of key points to focus on for a variety of NAB topics. This is the third in the series of monthly webinars on the topics. Uh, you can sign up for one, you can sign up for some or all of them. We will be sending out emails to register um, and I'll show you the list of webinars at the end, but you can also register on our website or you can click on the link in our monthly newsletter. So my name is Karen Moore. Uh, I'll be facilitating to demo today. I'm an account manager here at T-Vision and my background is 17 years of software account management experience working for ERP companies. Ian will be doing the demo today and he is a support consultant here. Um, he's been working at T-Vision for about one and a half years and he has been using NAB since 2000. So this webinar is about the five key things that we at T-Vision believe are the best to consider when creating and using jobs in NAB. We chose jobs or projects as some call it, as this is one of the most useful but underused features of NAB. Jobs allows you to really understand how efficient your business processes are and to see how much time, cost and effort it takes to achieve your business goals. Jobs also allows you to improve internal processes such as more accurate, detailed and automated invoicing or to allocate the most suitable resource for an order or service. So these key points are understanding jobs and how they are created. Associating the relevant tasks, what kind of materials and resource can be allocated and how they can be scheduled. How to assign time and expenses. How to use jobs to drive the invoicing and how budgets can be managed to and uh, how uh, you can use them to track your progress. I'll now hand over to Ian, who will go through the demo. Uh, as mentioned before, if you do have any questions, uh, please use the question box and he'll answer them after the demo. Hi there, we're looking at jobs on NAV. Um, let's jump straight in. I'm using NAV 2018 for today's demo. I'm using a standard Kronos database, so anything you see me doing, you can do yourself a little later on, as long as you've got access to Kronos. Um, I'm using the project manager's role center. It's got the ribbon set up for me, the menus are set up for me to kind of access the things that I need for jobs. Um, let's get straight into the jobs. They're very powerful. Um, and with Kronos, it comes with two sample jobs that you can have a look at and see how they work. We're going to create our own job uh, just to see how simple that is. So first of all, we give our job a title, which uh, I'm going to call this one new officers. Select a customer. I'm going to use the Canon group. It completes the rest of the header, just like normal sales orders, purchase orders. If I want to, I can assign a responsible person, which is any one of my resources. And a project manager is any user on my net system. Um, this is going to be a very simple job. We're going to deliver some desks. We're going to have one of our employees install those desks, their flat pack. Um, and then once the customer is happy, they'll sign off and they'll send the invoice. So three steps, we start entering them down here in the task lines. Um, each line gets a number and a description. So we'll deliver the desks. The next step is the build and install. And the final step is the customer sign off. So looking at this, if you're coming from a project management background, this is what you probably call your work breakdown structure or your job tasks, whatever your internal naming is. Uh, this is kind of high level detail of the steps, but we can go in and we can put a little bit more meat on these bones and we can start putting more detail into each step. Uh, we do that by 
using job planning lines. So we'll go in there. And for each one of the tasks, we can add multiple job planning lines. So for deliver the desks, I'm choosing this as a budget line. You have the choice between budget, billable, or both. If it's budget, we're recording costs. If it's billable, we're invoicing the customer. And if it's both, that's kind of like a time and material setup where you're both um, incurring costs and billing the customer for those same costs. Um, we can put in planning dates so we can start building, building Gantt charts and things like this. I'm not going to go to that level of detail. And for this, our jobs can integrate with our resources, items, GL accounts, and we can do plain text just to make the uh, descriptions look a bit nicer. So for this line, it's going to be items. Which item number? It's going to be the Athens desks we're going to deliver. Um, we'll deliver two of them. The system pulls in information from my item master. It's even checked the inventory and up here it's telling me I don't have enough inventory on stock, but that's not a problem. We'll carry on anywhere. For line 10, I can enter more lines if I'm delivering chairs and pedestals and anything else. We can add more lines there, but uh, I'm going to move up to line 2 now. On line 2, this time it's going to be one of my employees is going to be using their time. So this is a resource. And that resource is going to be Linda. And I think Linda's going to spend about four hours installing these desks. Um, Again, it's showing the costs um, that I'm going to incur when Linda goes and does this work. Final step on this job was number 30, and this is the customer sign-off. This time, it's not an expense I'm incur incurring. This time, it's what I'm going to build the customer. Um, I'm going to build them against a general ledger account, and I already have an account set up for my jobs, which is going to be this one. I can override this description here. Just so that when we print an invoice, it looks a little bit more decent. Um, and we've agreed with the customer that we're going to charge them ah, 1,500 for this job. So immediately, I've got a kind of a breakdown. I can see what my total costs are, I can see what the total price is I'm charging customers, I can see you know, a low level amount of detail here. I say OK, and up at this level it's started to pull through this information already. I can see what my budgeted costs are and what my billable price is going to be. And the fact boxes on the right hand side, they're also pulling this information on any one of these lines, you can drill down and it will take you to those project planning lines so we can see where these numbers came from. Now, the first thing that we noticed was we didn't have enough desks in stock to fulfill this job. Um, that's not a problem. We will go to our purchasing department and we will buy the desks. So if I go to purchase orders and I create a new purchase order, and again, the same um, nav logic of fill in the header, choose the vendor. This time it's going to be the London Postmaster, who also makes very nice desks. Um, we're going to buy from him an item. Which item number? It's the Athens desks. I would like two of them. It's pulled through the information that we need. And there are columns that you may have to show these columns. They're not necessarily there by default. We can say specifically which job is this purchase for, which line on the job is this for. And if there are multiple job planning lines, we could choose which one of those is this for. Um, I'm going to have to put in a document number if I want to post this and I will post this receive an invoice and in the background the stock is coming in and it's being reserved for the job it's created an invoice I'm not going to go and look at it if I go back to my open jobs and I have a look at this job that we've just 
um, created. And we can see we have our budgeted costs already. Some actual costs are starting to come through, and that's those two desks that we've just bought. Again, the fact boxes on this side are starting to populate with this information as well. So I've got a top level view of what's going on. Um, the next section is Linda's going to go and build and install those desks. So this time it's going to be a bit of time instead of um, items. Um, and to do that, we need to let Linda fill in a timesheet. So let's go and have a look at the timesheets. So down at the bottom, we have timesheets. Um, there isn't a timesheet for um, January 2019 here. So I'm just going to create a timesheet for Linda. I will choose the date range, which is going to be, I'll use the calendar because I don't know when the Mondays are in January 2019. Um, just going to do that for one week and I'm just going to do it for Linda and nobody else. Timesheet has been created and there's Linda's timesheet. Now, Linda, she could log on to the system to complete her timesheet. She might be using a mobile phone or a tablet on the web client to fill in her timesheets. But she would basically come in and she would say how much time she spent on each of the jobs that have been assigned to her. And we can see that she's booked out on quite a few jobs um, for this week. Let's uh, put in some hours, and this is the one that we're interested in. The others are from different jobs. So let's say Linda spent five hours maybe on this job, and, and now more than we budgeted for. Um, when she's completed her hours, and she could do this day by day, week by week, month by month, job by job, choice is yours, um, she would submit this for approval. Um, She's only going to submit this selected line, and that's fantastic. Next thing that would happen, Linda's manager would come into the system. He would see that uh, there's a timesheet from Linda that needs approval. Can go in there, have a look. Very happy with the five hours, and I'm going to approve this. And we'll just approve this line. We see the status has changed and the status has changed on the summary. So this is now ready for somebody in human resources to uh, book this time and maybe pass it over to payroll, whatever they need to do. Um, one thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that this time that Linda spent gets posted against our job. So to do that, we go to the job journals and I will just take the default journal and fortunately, there's a nice button to suggest lines from timesheets. So we'll use that. Um, fill in the options. What's the date range? It's 21st of the 1st, 19. And we will take it to the 31st of the 1st, 19. We're only going to do this for Linda. And we'll say OK. And there we go. It's brought back that one line for Linda where she has spent five hours at six pounds 30 per hour. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to post it. Yes. Document number must have a value. Oops, I need to put a document number in there. Um, we'll use that one. Post, yes. Usage will not be linked, that's fine. Successfully posted, lovely. Let's go out of here, let's go back and have a look at our job now and see where it's standing. And straight away, when we go in, we should notice that our actual costs have increased because now Linda's booked her time. Again, the fact boxes, we can see that those resource usage has come in there. I can see that I'm over budget because Linda did five hours, uh, five hours instead of the four hours that I budgeted. Um, so 
I've got a very good top level view of what's going on here and I can drill into any of these numbers to see where they came from. Um, one thing that I haven't done, I have not filled in the job posting group, so let me put that in now. I should have done that from the beginning. I could have put in a duration, start date and end date, um, if this is going to be a very long job. And if it's a very complicated job that's going to take time, I can also start saying how do I want my work in progress to be recorded on the system. You know, if I'm building a new hotel or something that's going to take three years, I don't want to wait until the end to see what's happening. I want on a, a week by week basis to have my work in progress posted so I can see what's going on. Right. Um, next thing we want to do is the customer sign off. Um, as soon as the customer signed off, they've uh, told us they're very happy with the desks. Now we can start driving that invoicing. And the great thing is there's a bench job to do this. Um, we can create invoices for everything on this list, or we can filter and we can just do this for one single job. And um, let's just do it for this one job. Okay. And it has created a sales invoice. If I come and look over here, I should see here's the sales invoice to the Canon Group. If I open it up, it's brought all the information through from the job. There's that funny text that I put in there for one and a half thousand pounds. Um, I can still edit it at this stage. It is not a posted document as yet. Um, let's go ahead and post it. Hopefully I've got all the setup done. Let's go post this. It has been posted. I'm not going to go and look at the posted document, but let me come back and look at my open jobs. And as soon as I go in, again, I have that top level view. I can see I budgeted to build one and a half thousand. I build one and a half thousand. I have my fact boxes down the right hand side, giving me all of this information. I can drill down on any of the numbers and see where they came from. So that is one kind of use of jobs. Um, in this one, we've integrated the use of items, the use of resources and the use of general ledger accounts. It is quite common. Um, for a lot of companies to just do the resources. Um, and it's also quite common to use jobs just for monitoring internal projects, something that you're never going to sell to a customer. So if I have a look here, I prepared a few earlier. Um, I've got one here, it's a marketing push. Um, if I open it up, my marketing department are going to do a bit of a marketing drive. Um, they're gonna incur some expenses doing this. They're going to print some brochures. It's going to cost 1,720. They're going to mail these brochures to potential customers, and then they're going to sit on the phones following up. I've got a total cost for all of this. I don't have anything that I'm going to build to any customers. And I achieve that simply in my job planning lines. Every line that's in here is a budget line. There's nothing that's going to be built. So I'm just using this job to monitor internal costs. It's not posting anything against any customers. And if I close this one and we look at this expo that my sales team are going to go to, again, we're going to print some flyers, buy some gifts. Someone's going to go in and set up our expo stand. And on the day, there's going to be some people at the expo um, talking to customers. Again, on the planning lines, we can see there are multiple people on the day who are going to be talking to customers. So each line on my work breakdown structure can have multiple lines in the background. Um, again, they're all budget. There's nothing that's billable. So I'm just measuring internal costs. So jobs, very powerful. They can be used for measuring things internally. They can be used for doing jobs for customers and then driving the billing of those customers. And within jobs, there are a number of reports. If As long as you're familiar with NAV up on the ribbon, there are standard reports that go. Um, 
against the jobs and you could go into any individual job and again there are reports that go with that job i would invite you to have a look at those reports see what they're doing um it pretty much covers the basics they're not the most beautiful and elegant reports um, but they are fully customizable so we can make them look as beautiful as you want them um that's it for my demo um, I do know that uh, some questions have come through. Um, one of the questions is, can jobs be combined? Um, there's a number of, way of, number of ways of combining jobs. So you might be talking to one of your customers. Um, you might have three jobs that you're doing for them. You could, within the NAV system, split up one single job here to be three different jobs with different lines with subtotals so the customer thinks you know you're talking three jobs internally you're talking one job that way you've combined the jobs um, there is functionality to append one job to another job so you can merge jobs in that way so that there are with Days of combining jobs in NAV and it depends on your processes and, and what suits you and how you would do that. Um, another one of the questions was um, if you've got your um, job details on an Excel spreadsheet how would you get them into NAV? Um, the job details I would assume is the job planning lines so if we just quickly go into one where we've got some job planning lines from this screen, um, what you could do, you could copy these lines, you could then open Excel, paste these lines, you could append within Excel any more lines that you need to add to this um, job, copy them, you can come back to NAV and you can paste and copy and paste works very well on this screen. So to get your jobs from Excel into NAV is quite easy. Um, I'm going to pass you back to Corin to finish off the rest of the presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Ian. So we'd like to leave you with five key takeaways about jobs, which we hope will assist you when considering how to use them in NAV. Firstly, decide what your end goal is. What do you ultimately want jobs to tell you at the end of the sales cycle or the reporting period? Then decide if you need to include both internal or external projects or both. Then understand how you're going to use jobs. Is it for allocating resource, helping with budgeting, automating invoicing, or track work in progress? The next step is to decide what factors need to be included within the project calculation. Is this going to be resource, time and expenses, machinery, materials, or external services? And lastly, what analysis do you need to see if you've achieved your end goal? Will this be budget versus actual, sales versus cost, or resource fulfillment quota? So we hope you found this webinar interesting and informative. This is the third in the T-Vision NAV webinar series, and we will be sending out emails soon to register for the next one. We'll also put a reminder about the webinar uh, into our newsletter as well. So thank you for attending. Uh, once I close this session, a survey will appear, and it'll be great if you could respond with some feedback. If you do have any questions, feel free to email them to me at marketing at tvision.co.uk. Thank you.